All right, guys, we're going to see how this goes. This is 2-5. Um, it's finding a line of best fit. Basically, you're looking for um, data that forms a line when you place it all in a graph. Um, so we're going to get real familiar with your graphing calculator today. Um, what I need you to do is get that calculator out if you haven't already. And I'm going to show you a few things. Um, first of all, this um, sheet here that you're seeing is in your Canvas assignment um, as calculator instructions. And it's just going to talk you through everything that I'm talking you through right now. Everything in red on this page are the actual buttons that you will hit to get to where you need to be, I think, if I pressed all of them or if I highlighted all of them correctly. Um, I hope. Um, so I'm going to walk you through this. Uh, we will have hopefully some time in class and this Friday is a Friday where you can come in and go over things. So if you're wanting some help with the calculator, this Friday would be a great day for that. Okay. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. First thing, um, first you're going to turn on the calculator. Okay. So hit power. Um, and then from there, I'm really sorry if it keeps like focusing and refocusing. I haven't figured out how to make it stop doing that, but I'll, we'll see. Um, first thing you're going to do, okay, we're going to go up here. We're going to turn our diagnostic on. Um, so you're going to hit mode and mode. If you look here is right next to the blue key, the second key, um, you're going to hit mode and then you're going to arrow down until you see stat diagnostics. Okay. Yours might look like this right now. We want it to say on. So you're going to go to the arrow to the right, click that, then hit enter. Okay. Um, and then just quit out of there. So second quit, and you should never have to do that step again. Okay. So that's your first step with what we're doing here. Um, then I'm going to take you to the notes real quick. Okay, so your notes look like this, and I'm going to bring up another video here. Um, so if you look at the top here, you have a Y equals window, zoom, trace, graph, all these buttons up here. Okay, you're going to be using a lot of those. So these are really the ones you're going to use the most Y equals um, it's actually not table anymore. Yep, it's window and zoom. Um, and then the trace button, we will use that too. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to click your Y equals. Um, yours might look different than mine right now because I've been solving problems like this. So you want this Y1 to be clear. So just hit clear so that there's nothing in your Y1. But then this is also hugely important. See how my plot one is blacked out? Um, if I hit enter and I go down, now it's not black, okay? You need it to be black. If this is not a dark box, you're not going to get a graph. So we want to turn our plots on. So you're going to go up to plot one, hit enter, and then go down to Y1. That means your plots are on now, okay? That's what we want. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is talk a little bit about... Um, Sorry, I'm trying to make my graph small over here. We're going to talk a little bit about just some of the um, simple details of um, plotting a graph. Um, and then I'll get into showing you what buttons you're, you're, you're going to use for what. So first thing, um, a scatter plot. Okay, a scatter plot is data points on your graph. Okay, it's kind of going to look scattered and that makes it a scatter plot. Um, but let me just show you over here. Your scatter plots can look like a lot of different things. So I'm going to pretend this is the screen of your calculator. I'm going to show you some different scenarios. Okay, five different scenarios. One scenario is this. Maybe you have a bunch of points and they're on their way up. Okay, we would say this is a strong 
positive correlation. Okay, these are all correlations. I'm running out of room up there, sorry. Um, so it's a strong positive correlation. It's on its way up. I can kind of put a line through all of them, okay? Um, or maybe you have something like this, okay? And it's on its way down, but they're all pretty close together. That's a strong, you guessed it, negative correlation, okay? Um, you can also have something where the points are a little bit more spread out, but it still looks like, oh, I should do that different. Hold on, let's change that. We're gonna go this way. Okay, where it looks like they're still on their way up, but they're more spread out. That's a weak positive correlation. Or same thing going the other way. If they're a little more spread out, that would be a weak negative correlation. They're not real close together. They're not very similar. Um, and then the last one is when it is no correlation. And that one, you guessed it again, is just points all over the place, right? There's no correlation. We don't see an uptrend. We don't see a downtrend. Um, no correlation, okay? The line that I'm putting in all of these, that's called a trend line. And another word for it is the line of best fit. So it's the best line that I can draw through the masses of our um, information that is there, okay? A line of best fit, and you're gonna draw a lot of lines of best fit. Fortunately, your calculator is usually gonna do that for you. Um, and then the other term that you need to know is the correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient is gonna be a lowercase r in your calculator. And that number is gonna be close to one or negative one is what we're looking for, okay? A number that's close to one or negative one. Um, if it's a negative sloped line, it'll be a negative one, okay? And this tells us how good your trend line is. So um, like this one is close to one, this one's close to negative one, these ones not as close, okay? These other two here and here. Um, we wanna be as close to one as we can. So think of it like a test, right? If I got a 0.93 for R, that's like a 93%, that's an A. That's a good test score, okay? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a good grade here. Now, the numbers, technically, they call it a good correlation, a strong um, line of best fit, a strong correlation, if you pass the test. So a 0.6, to one is considered strong. 0.3 to 0.6 is considered moderate. And you really don't need to do anything with these. I'm just telling you because it's interesting information. Um, and then zero to 0.3 is considered a weak correlation. Okay. Okay. So with all of this, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking your graphing calculator and plotting some points and figuring out where things go and what we have to do with it. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, I'm gonna move this over, try to make room for my calculator to show up on here. Hopefully this is big enough for you guys. Um, okay, so we're gonna start here and then we'll just have to move it. Actually, you know what, I'll go here. That should be okay. Okay, so here we go with the calculator again. Um, this problem, it says the table of information is for the gold medal winners in the men's 100 meter freestyle during various summer Olympics, okay? Um, what we're doing with this is we're considering the year, our X value, Oops, I wanted to move on me. Um, so this, what we're going to, it's our X, but we're going to call it our L1. And then this is going to be our Y, and that's going to be our L2. Okay, list one and list two for what we're doing in um, the graph. Okay, um, so it says for the first thing, graph this on your calculator. 
does it represent a positive, a negative, or no correlation? Okay, so on your calculator, here's what you're going to do. Turn it back on if it turned off. Okay, um, I'm going to quit out of here. Second, quit. Make sure there's nothing in here. Okay, we want to clear it out, which we did earlier. I showed you earlier. So quit, clear that out. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go to stat and then edit. So it's on edit already. You can just hit enter. Okay, now I have stuff in here. You may or may not. You're going to go up to L2. Don't hit delete. We don't want to delete the list. We want to clear the list. Okay, never hit delete. You're going to hit clear and then enter and L2 goes away. Okay, then you're going to arrow over to the left. Go to L1. Go up to L1. You're going to hit clear and then enter again. Okay, and now we're going to put these numbers in. So I'm going to put all of these in. For my L1 column. Okay, so you're going to start with 1908 and then hit enter. Okay, you always have to hit enter for it to be put in place. Then 1920, enter. 1928, enter. 1956, enter. 1968, enter. 1984, enter. 2000, enter, 2008, enter, 2012, enter, okay? And I cannot stress to you how important it is that you put these in carefully because if you mess up one digit here, it's gonna mess a lot of things up for you, okay? So put these numbers in very carefully, take your time. Okay, so now your L2, the red is gonna be our L2, so I'm gonna move over to L2, and then I'm gonna put these in, 65.6, enter, um, 60.4, and I'm going to go fast here. Um, you can pause me if I'm going too fast for you. 56, 55.4, 52.2, 49.8, 48.18, 48.15, and 47.05. Okay, now notice what happens here. You should be seeing a left side and a right side, an L1 and an L2 that are equal in length. If you have more on one than the other, it, nothing will work, okay? So they have to be the same number of terms here, okay? Okay, so we have our data in. Now what we're gonna do, it says to sketch, actually before that, it says, um, do these points represent a positive, negative, or no correlation? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph the points just to take a look at it. And the way we do that is we hit zoom, which is that middle button up top, zoom, and then nine. Okay, and you can see all my points there. Would you say that's positive, negative, or no correlation? That is a negative correlation, okay? So we're gonna write negative because it's on its way down. Okay, then it tells us to sketch the graph. That's gonna go here, by the way. Um, I don't sketch my graph right away. What I do is I find my line of best fit because I like to draw the line in first. So I'm actually gonna jump to um, letter C here before I sketch the graph. That was a big boom. Um, and we're gonna round to five decimal places. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, we have all our data in. We're gonna go back to stat and press stat, but now we don't wanna edit. We put our stuff in already. We wanna calculate. So you're gonna arrow over to calculate. And then if you look, we're doing a line of regression, lin reg, okay? A linear regression is what we want. So you may hit four or you can arrow down to it and hit enter. They'll both get you there, okay? This is what you should be seeing then. X list, L1, Y list, L2. Those are the two we're using, L1 and L2. Frequency list, and it will auto-populate that for you. You shouldn't have to do that. Nothing goes here, okay? We are going to store our regression equation, and the way that you do that is you go alpha, that's the green button, okay? Oh, I didn't go down, sorry. Don't do that yet. <laughs> um, go down to store the regression equation, okay? Then hit alpha, then trace up here. It's really F4 that we're doing. 
and it's saying, where do you wanna store it? I wanna store it as Y1. You don't have to move it, it will already be there. Just hit enter, okay? And now you're gonna go down and you're gonna calculate. So hit enter and here is our equation. It's gonna be in the form AX plus B. Here's your A, here's your B, okay? One thing I want you to notice right now is here's your R. So for the R, you have um, point negative 0.9818 like that, okay? Um, you are going to, um, sorry, my son just came in, I got distracted. It says, how accurate is your line of best fit? This is letter D here. If you wanna answer that question right now, you totally can. Your correlation coefficient, the R, came out to a negative point nine eight one eight okay how accurate is it it's very accurate okay that is a strong um, correlation here okay so we'll say very accurate okay um, please stop them sorry my son again um, okay, so we're going to go back now and we're going to write the equation of our line. So we have in this setup our A, and we already stored this. I'll show you in a minute where you can find it if you want to find it from there. I think it's easier just to use it from here. So we're going to write it as an equation. Y equals, it's a negative 0.5 decimal places, 1, 6, 3, 5, 7, okay times x, we're just putting it into this form right now, plus our b value, 375.25182, okay? That is our equation. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph that line to be able to draw our graph in here. So what we're looking at here um, let me show you one other place now that you can find it. If you want to just find your equation without having to make it from this, you'll have just done this. Now, if you go to y equals, there's your equation, okay? Now it's way more decimal points, but if you just keep arrowing over, there's your x plus there's your y or your b, sorry. Um, so you can find it there as well, okay? You don't have to do it that way, but you can. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do zoom nine again to get our graph. So zoom nine, and then look what happens. You get your line drawn in there. Okay. Um, here's why I like to draw the line in first. Notice where the line is here. It's a little bit from the top. So I'm just going to put a little marker a little bit from the top on my paper here. Okay. A little marker right here. And then down at the bottom, it looks like it's right in the corner. So down here, okay, if you take a ruler then, a straight edge, and draw that line in, that's about where your line should be, okay? And then it's way easier to plot your points from that. So if we're gonna plot our points, we have a point right up here, a couple points down below the line, one point that's like right on the line, another point below, another point below, one that's kind of right on it, and then one that's on it, and one that's slightly off of it, just like that. Um, so that's our graph, okay? That makes graphing it much simpler, okay? Um, that's pretty much what you're gonna be doing every time. So I'm gonna stop this recording, and I'm gonna show you here what you do with this next piece. Okay, so it says using your equation, right? Here's our equation. Um, predict the time for the 2016 Olympics. I should have changed that date to a later Olympics, but we'll see. I don't know if this actually was what they did in the 2016, but this is what it would have been predicted for 2016. Um, so 2016, remember the years were our X's. So we're literally just taking that 2016 and we're plugging it in for our X. So Y equals a negative 0 0.16357 times 2016 plus 375.25182. Okay, so I just plugged it into this equation. 
And now you plug that into your calculator. Um, please don't feel like you need to try and do that by hand. Plug it into your calculator. You should be getting, um, it comes out to 45.49 seconds. So that would be the prediction for 2016. Should look it up and see if that's actually what they did. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to do one more like that. And then we're not going to actually do the part B, but if you want to try the part B down below by yourself, you're welcome to do that just for some extra practice with it. Um, what we are going to do is do another one with this chart right below. Let me get this set up again. Okay. Um, so let's move this over here and zoom this in a little bit here. Okay, so what we have is um, we're gonna clear this data out and then we are gonna put our new data into the graph here. Um, so this is, do you remember where to find it? Hopefully, stat. Okay, if you click stat and then we're gonna click edit and then we're gonna clear out both of these lists. So you're gonna go up to L2, hit clear. Remember, not delete, you're gonna clear and then enter, okay? And then you're gonna go over to L1, go up to L1, hit clear, and then enter again, okay? Um, and then from there, now we can put our new information in. So this is gonna be our L1. This is gonna be our L2, okay? So L1 is gonna be 30, 42, 52, 56 and 56 and then L2 is going to be 83, 68, 56, 50 and 47. Oh, 47. See, that would have been horrible for our numbers if I put the wrong thing in there. Um, so 47. Notice we have equal sides here, so we're in good shape. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna to try to find um, the line of best fit, and then we're gonna to round to the nearest hundredth, it says, okay, so that's two decimal places. Um, so for this one, you can do your whole process again, see if you remember it. Maybe you wanna pause me right now and see if you can walk through that process again, essentially asking the same questions from up above. Um, find the line of best fit first, okay, so we're gonna find the line of best fit um, here's how it goes. You're going to press stat. Okay. And then remember, we want to go over to calculate. We already edited. We want to go to calculate. And now we want linear regression, number four. Okay. L1 is taken care of. L2 is taken care of. We're going to store the regression equation. So remember, this is the one where you go alpha, trace, and enter. We want Y1. Okay, and now we'll go down to calculate, hit enter, and that should be our information. Um, it said round to the nearest hundredth, so two decimal places, okay? Um, so this is going to be y equals a, which is negative 1.32 times x, um, plus, oops, plus our b, which is 122.89, okay? So that would be your um, equation that we're looking for, okay? That's your line of best fit. And now we're gonna graph it. Um, but what I want you to see is this R, right? That's very close to negative one. So this is a strong negative correlation, okay? So this is a good setup here. So when we graph it, do you remember how to graph it? Zoom and then nine. Got to get that out of there, my scribbles. Suffer, I can't. Hmm. It won't let me erase that. Sorry, guys. Um, oh, maybe it will if I do that. There we go. Okay. Um, so from here now, you see your graph. So if we were to draw a box to graph it, Okay, remember what I said? I always try to find my point up here. It's not a point on the graph, just where did my graph line start and where did it end? And then take a straight edge and draw that in. I didn't use a straight edge that time. 
Um, and now you can plot your points. So there's a point, point here, there's a point about here, there's a point slightly above right here, and then two right over top of each other here. Okay, so that would be your graph. Um, if I asked you what latitude your line predicts, if we're going to get an average temperature of 60, okay, so if I wanted an average temperature, I'm going to move this one out of the way here a second, okay, if I wanted an average temperature of 60, for this set of data, the temperature is your Y. Right? So what we would have to do is we would plug 60 in right here. So we would say 60 equals negative 1.32x plus 122.89. Um, so we would take away the 122.89 and you get negative 62.89 equals negative 1.32x and then we would divide. Okay, and we get x equals 47.64, okay, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so if we were looking for what latitude, that would be the north latitude that we would find, okay? If you wanna try it again on another problem, you can try this one um, just for some practice, but you don't have to, it's not homework or anything, just if you want another one to try, that would be fine. Um, I do want to show you some of the, like, here's some things to look out for if you're having issues with your calculator, okay? First is if you get this dim mismatch, okay? If it says that on your calculator, you need to check your L1 and L2, okay? The way you do that is you're going to go stat and then you're gonna hit edit. And when you do that, if your L1 or your L2 is missing, if one of them has been deleted because you accidentally hit delete instead of clear, your setup editor fixes that. And the way you get to setup editor okay, for setup editor, you're gonna go stat and then hit five um, and then hit enter and that will, it will bring your list back to normal. Okay, um, the other thing to look out for, and I've said this a few times, but I'll write it down here. When you hit zoom nine, if you have no points, so nothing shows up, um, you probably don't have your plots on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the Y equals button up at the top, one of that very top left button. And then you wanna make sure that plot one has that black box around it. Okay, this should all be highlighted. If it's not, that's where the issue will lie. Okay, so zoom nine. Um, zoom nine will get you your graph every time if all your settings are correct. Okay, so those are some of the issues to look out for if you're having issues at all. Um, otherwise, hopefully it works beautifully for you. That is it.